what has happened with covid-19 is something humanity has never experienced for various reasons one of the most important reason is that in the earlier recession the demand was reduced but this is the first time the demand and the supply both are affected i am predicting that 40 crore people are going to lose jobs in india in america alone 50 million people are going to lose jobs these are all the jobs across all sectors and all kinds of levels the most important thing to understand is that by june 15 this job scene will become really really bad because that's the time people would have come out of the lockdown and companies will start laying off people and that's the time the cash flow will hit them harder today i am talking to girish kaushik who's an expert in restructuring businesses girish is my financial advisor for pepper square get things done and all the companies i have invested in the last 8 years He is a chartered accountant by profession, with 18 years of experience, having worked with companies like Deloitte and Wipro. He is the founder of JAA and Associates. He has helped numerous startups to grow to a multi-million-dollar business, especially one startup which he started working in 2014, and they have become India's largest. and most valuable online food ordering and delivery platform with a valuation of 3 billion dollar plus he focuses on valuation consulting transaction advisory and management consulting girish can you share your point of view on what's going on across the world so we are living through some unprecedented times um i hope all of us realize the significance of what we are going through in the last 60 days or 90 days of the crisis it's a health humanitarian and economic crisis that is mind boggling to be very honest uh just think about the numbers almost a century ago uh, world war 2 we called it world war but it actually was only about 30 countries corona virus has already impacted more than 170 180 countries today the gdp contraction in all the economies is going to be uh, long protracted and uh, impacting the last person of that uh, country us economy is expected to contract by 30% the best case estimates for gdp growth for india is between negative to 1 2% what was about 7% 3 4 months back job losses are going to be pervasive across sectors this is a truly secular pandemic the humanitarian aspect and the health aspect of this crisis are also uh, of a scale never imagined 4.1 million people have been infected so far more than 200000 deaths us alone has seen more than 80000 deaths more than two decades of losses lost lives in the vietnam war two decades america lost 50000 lives and in just last 2 3 months america alone has lost 80000 lives there is uncertainty everywhere people are unsure of so many things and the unknown has increased the work life environment has changed drastically and economy is all time low across the world future is bleak what's your advice so when countries and economies across the globe uh, went into lockdowns and uh, forced stoppage of the economy what came out was that uh, no business could have been prepared uh, for something like this no bcp dr can match it it is something similar to getting practice on a club level and having to play international cricket uh, without any practice the situation today is no better than what it was 60 days ago everything is unsure we don't know the significance of this how long the duration of this impact is going to be how businesses are going to cope and when are they going to come out of this all of this uh, creates a significant amount of panic across the globe so imagine a car going at 100 miles per hour and uh, the brakes are slammed no seat belt no airbag is going to protect 
the passengers from uh, hurtling forward and getting hurt. That is what happened to the momentum of the world's economy uh, in the last uh, two to three months. To come out of this is going to be a long drawn affair. And in the meanwhile, uh, whenever the momentum of the economy is broken, cash cycle is the one that gets completely destroyed. Uh, and businesses are going to starve, households are going to starve for cash. Girish, as you know, the businesses are going through a terrible time. Is there a framework which you can suggest so that they can follow that and then start preparing for what to do? So the coronavirus impact needs a response and that response needs to be calibrated and measured. It's important to build a framework. Uh, the framework address certain key elements of business, starting from people. People are your most critical assets. Have very calibrated response to people, uh, the crisis around people, humanitarian, as well as jobs. The second most critical aspect of the plan is cash flow planning. How much do I have left? How much do I need? How much, how much longer can I survive? The third critical thing that businesses need to do is prepare a short-term cash-based realistic plan and that needs to be in various scenarios uh, best worst and a realistic case and as you prepare those short-term plans review the capacities across the organization renegotiate vendor contracts look at reprioritizing initiatives see where the capex budgets have been laid out and and ensure that it is reviewed to see what needs to continue and what needs to be paused. Governments across the globe are trying to create some kind of stimulus to the economy, some kind of reliefs on taxation and so on and so forth. Be vigilant, take advantage of what's available. At the same time, I don't think we can wait for governments to help us on this. We need to prepare for the future. So concentrate on sustainable marketing during this time, building up capabilities to be able to take advantage when the recovery happens. Having been an entrepreneur for 25 years, I know that for sure the old ideas will not work for the new challenges. What is your advice for the next 3 to 24 months for the entrepreneurs and the businesses? The first realization we need to have is that all of the old plans are redundant now. They need to be thrown out. We need to do a scenario based analysis having the best case, the worst case and the realistic case scenarios drawn out for the next three to six months. Second most critical aspect of that scenario planning is regarding sales. Sales will be hit and at an order of magnitude. It's not a 10% reduction in sales. It is probably a 50% reduction in sales or a 75% reduction in sales. Customers are not going to want the same product after this. Product portfolio will change. There will be pricing pressure. What all of that means is that the pressure on working capital or the cash position of any business is going to be immense. That has to be the most critical focus of all the plans going forward. How much inventory do I have left? How do I collect faster? How do I pay my vendors? Because not paying vendors is going to have a ripple effect on the entire economy and uh, stop the economy as such. So working capital planning is going to be the most critical aspect of the plan. And with people, communicate fast, Communicate continuously and consistently. As far as vendors go, be empathetic. They are part of the overall chain and cycle. Renegotiate, calibrate your payments with receipts. But at the same time, keep the wheels turning. The biggest asset for any business is their people. There is nothing more important than people. So at this time, Companies have to let go of people, the salaries are cut. What should entrepreneurs do? Where do they start? And how do they manage it? People are the most critical asset for any business. People costs tend to be one of the largest costs for most businesses. The, the actions at this point of time have to be decisive. Communicate, be honest, be transparent. At the same time, there should not be any sugar coating. People understand the crisis. Be open with them. Lead by example. People will follow. Most entrepreneurs have first taken a pay cut before asking the employees 
to do any sacrifice for the business. When people cost actions are taken, they need to be thought out and they need to be implemented in one swoop without going back and forth on what to do and what not to do. If there are going to be layoffs, communicate and take that action. If there is going to be a cut in bonuses, increments or salaries, communicate very clearly, lay out the rationale and the logic and reset the expectations in the light of the new reality. There is an immense opportunity today to innovate HR practices uh, at the same time conserving cash. Look at stock in lieu of cash. See if you can bring in more employees onto your cap table by paying in, in the form of stock rather than in the form of cash. Look at furloughs or pay cuts rather than looking at layoffs. Bring employees into confidence and try and learn new ways of HR operations. While we do all of this, keep an eye firmly on the future because we are going to come out of this. Create IP assets, reorganize your organization, reprioritize your investments in terms of people. As you do all of these cost actions, ensure you are not killing the taproot of the organization or the basic DNA of the organization. Identify critical resources and make sure that you retain them. But right now, there is no sales happening. There is no account receivable. People have put it on hold for a long time and they are not paying it. We still have expenses. We have to pay people salaries, rent expenses, tax. So what should entrepreneurs do? How do they manage cash flow? When Jack Welch, the legendary business leader and the former CEO of GE was asked, what should companies do in these uncertain times? The first thing that he mentioned is cash is king. So store cash, hold cash. The first element of any cash flow plan is collections. Can we collect faster? Can we send invoices on day one? Can we ask the clients to pay in 15 days instead of the 30 days? Can we go and discount our receivables or factor our receivables and collect cash? Look at some financing available there. Calibrating collections to expenses is going to be even more critical today than it was earlier. Second is look at critical expenses and cash outflows. More often than not, rent is one of them. Businesses are renegotiating their rents with landlords, asking for waivers, deferrals and similar facilities. At the same time, be aware that even the landlord is a businessman. Don't cut to the bone. Make sure there is a win-win situation between both the parties. And the same thing applies to every vendor. Every other vendor uh, that can be negotiated, please do so with relevant amount of empathy for that other business as well. The third most critical element in cash flow planning is a relook at all the discretionary spends. Any p and review, I'm sure, will bring out hidden wastages and expenses that can be cut at this point of time. Relook at capacities. Do I need all the space? With the new work-life balances and work from home setting in, do I need the entire office space that I have? Can I let go of something? The fourth most important point in cash flow planning is to conserve that capital. Drop peripheral developments and R&D investments that may have a long payback period. Postpone them at this point of time. Sell underutilized assets and conserve capital at any cost. At the same time, see if you can augment the capital that you have. Can you get new credit facilities? Extend your existing credit lines. Increase your capitalization. This is a time when certain family offices uh, may be willing to invest in your business. Take advantage of that. Hold cash and ensure you have an extended runway. Countries like America has given huge amount of financial aid. They are calling it as forgiveness loan. In India, I have not experienced something similar to that. So what is your advice? Across the globe, governments have been offering support of some sort or the other. But predictably, the support has initially been social, which means taking care of migrant labor, direct benefit transfer, and so on and so forth. Indian government's response to its business so far has been in two tranches. One is deferment of compliances without interest of GST, uh, lower interest on TDS delays of remittances and so on and so forth. There was an uh, announcement 
of the government paying for the provident fund of employees for eligible enterprises and so on. Uh, but so far, the response from the government has been in pieces, but more is expected. There will be a coordinated long-term fiscal stimulus plan that is expected in the next few weeks. As businesses, one needs to be vigilant and see how best to take advantage of that. The second aspect of government response has been through the RBI, through a monetary stimulus. So RBI has rolled out a 50,000 crore rupees plan to make liquidity and cash availability better in the market. The impact of that though will take time to trickle down. It may lead to better retain NBFCs which can lend further, MSME and other priority sector loans from banks. As the country comes out of lockdown, we can see more easing of credit. Hope is one word I don't like because it's overrated and it's the biggest sales pitch humanity has ever seen because you have not seen the future, I have not seen the future. So what do you suggest for entrepreneurs and businessmen? How do they prepare for the future? Any response at this time has to be with an eye very firmly towards the future. The strategy for that has to be a combination of defense and offense. As a defense strategy, look at your sales, marketing and customer engagement. Engage with your customers continuously. Make sure that you are relevant. Make sure you understand their needs during this crisis time and calibrate your product responses to what they may require in future. As another defense, rethink your cost structures. As your product portfolio changes and customer demand shifts, you need to calibrate your cost structures to meet that. Take advantage of sales and discounts. Companies are looking to liquidate their inventory. It could be their uh, stock, it could be ad space, it could be uh, software licenses that are available. Take advantage of the fact that everybody is trying to sell faster, collect faster, the same way that your business is. The most critical defense move at this point of time is to protect people and talent. Identify critical talent that is required for the company to recover and grow from here. Offer stock, offer growth, offer perspective and make sure that you retain that critical team. Make a list of offense strategies as well. This is the time to forge partnerships. There could be mergers and acquisition opportunities. There could be hiring opportunities one needs to see with an eye towards the future. Create IP assets. Reprioritize your product lines. Bring your innovation forward where you think the customer demand is going to shift once we recover out of this crisis. And to conclude, refocus. This business is your baby. You cannot give up on this at this time of adversity. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. And today that is truer than any other time before us. At the end of the day, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, Stay safe, stay home.